Hello everyone, and welcome back to Conspiracy. This is actually my second time recording this video because I recorded this and next week's video and then my laptop died and it won't turn on. So all the sound recording is gone, so I have to do this again with a different sound recorder. So if it sounds different, I apologize. Unfortunately, we're just going to have to deal with it for now until I can figure out what the heck's going on with my laptop. Anyway, today is just another Monday in the world. Unless you live in the United States, then it's President's Day, the day that we celebrate our presidents here. It also means a lot of people have the day off of work, including myself. But because of that, I figured what better way to spend the day than to look at some of the ghosts of the White House. And near the end, I kind of just tacked on some like little secrets about the White House that are kind of cool. But this video is mostly about the ghosts. It's also not too long because there aren't that many ghost sightings in the White House. The fact that there are any at all are kind of surprising. With that being said, thank you for choosing to spend some time with me today, and let's just get into it. Nothing like being subscribed to Conspiracy on YouTube. Nothing like it. The most well-known ghost in the White House is actually Abraham Lincoln, our 16th president. Abraham Lincoln is most famous for guiding the states through the Civil War, ending slavery, and being the first president assassinated in office. He was assassinated at Ford's Theater and not on the White House grounds, so... Don't know why he would haunt the White House, but each, to, each, to each his own, I guess. The ghost of Lincoln has been seen by a number of people who will be telling their stories. The first person that reported seeing the ghost of Abraham Lincoln is actually the wife of my favorite president, First Lady Grace Coolidge, wife of Calvin Coolidge. She said that she saw his ghost standing at a window in the yellow oval room staring out at the Potomac River in 1927. The second and most famous sighting was in 1942 when Queen Wilhelmina of the Netherlands allegedly heard footsteps outside of her bedroom within the White House and answered a knock on her door. When she opened the door, she saw Abraham Lincoln standing there in a frock coat and a top hat. Upon seeing this, she fainted. The next sighting of Abraham Lincoln is actually my favorite story. It involves Winston Churchill, the Prime Minister of England, who was known to retire late in the evening. Uh, what he liked to do was he would like to stop working, take a hot bath, drink some scotch and smoke a cigar, and relax, because that guy knew how to live life. One night, on one of his trips out to the White House, he gets out of the tub with nothing but a cigar in his hand. He's not wearing anything, no top hat, no clothes, just a cigar, and he walks into his adjoining room, and he sees Abraham Lincoln leaning against the mantle of the fireplace. Churchill, who is kind of known as a jokester, looks at him, takes a cigar out of his mouth, taps it a little bit, chuckles, and says, Good evening, Mr. President. You seem to have me at a disadvantage. Lincoln smiled as if he was chuckling, and then vanished. Later, President Teddy Roosevelt, Ronald Reagan's daughter and her husband, and a number of FDR's staff claimed to see Lincoln's ghost. On fact, on one occasion, one of FDR's staff, um, his personal valet, actually ran out of the White House screaming that he saw Abraham Lincoln's ghost. Eleanor Roosevelt said that she never saw Lincoln's ghost, but she claimed to have felt his presence multiple times. She also claimed that her dog, Fala, would start barking at nothing often when she felt Abraham Lincoln's presence, which is kind of cool because dogs are more connected to the spiritual realm. Multiple people have heard loud knocks, footsteps, or been awakened by loud noises when spending the night in the Lincoln bedroom. Another ghost is one of the ghosts of our earliest and craziest presidents, Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson is an interesting fella, and if you're outside of the United States, I don't expect you to know about him at all, and even if you're in the United States, I mean, he's only 20, but what else did he do? He dueled people with pistols on the front lawn of the White House for fun, because he thought that was a fun pastime. Then, one time, he was almost the first president assassinated in office, but the assassin's gun jammed, and Andrew Jackson turned around and started beating the snot out of him, to the point that the Secret Service had to pull Andrew Jackson off of his would-be assassin to keep him from killing him. Andrew Jackson was kind of... A, he was crazy, but kind of cool. <laughs> it's kind of cool. I mean, nowadays, all of our presidents are dementia patients, so... I'd rather have someone that could beat the snot out of their assassin than a dementia patient. People often don't see Andrew Jackson. They actually hear him. They hear him cursing, which um, 
he loved to curse. He loved to curse in his life. So they hear him cursing. They also often hear yelling coming from the room that he slept in. Also, something that might explain Abraham Lincoln's ghost is his wife, Mary Todd Lincoln, would often hold seances in the White House once her son, Willie, died. And she believed that she communicated with the ghost of Andrew Jackson multiple times. Linda Johnson, daughter of President Lyndon Johnson, met and spoke with a fellow child of a president, Willie Lincoln, who passed away at the age of 12 with a fever. His ghost is said to have visited Linda on the very room that he passed away in. Much like his father Abraham, Willie's actually kind of just seen around the White House and is probably the second most seen ghost right after Abraham himself. The White House has many secret hidden rooms, a secret tunnel with perhaps more, and secrets that rotate from president to president. The hidden rooms are used by presidents and staff as kind of study areas. However, those are just the ones that we know about or quiet rooms to work in. Um, Bill Clinton actually used the secret room um, as a place to practice his saxophone so that no one would bug him. There is one confirmed tunnel in the White House. It connects the east and west wings together as well as leading to a bunker in case of war. There are also rumored tunnels that have never been confirmed. Um, such as going from the White House to the Vice President's House, the White House to the Pentagon, the White House to the Library of Congress, and those all interconnect kind of like a big, almost like a subway station down there where you can just walk the tunnels to get to wherever you want, right? They probably have like electric bikes or something, or knowing what the government and military have, they probably have like hoverboards that they take and they just, we, they just don't give us that technology because they hate us. When it comes to the secrets themselves that pass from president to president, only the presidents truly know what those are. However, there are some speculations about what they could be. Some, of course, a big one is aliens. Aliens exist and are among us already. Or secret weapons, which, of course, we know there are tons of secret weapons. Um, it was announced recently that um, Russia has a new weapon that's like a satellite killer. So... It's almost guaranteed that the U.S. and China already had that weapon for like 20 years. And we're just finding out about it because Russia is not as good at keeping secrets as the Soviet Union was. There is a rumor that these secrets are needed to maintain the status quo. Which is why no matter what a president says, nothing seems to change that much. A president could walk in with a million campaign promises and keep four of them because the rest would disrupt the status quo of these secrets. It's oftentimes they'll they'll meet with the other president or they'll learn these secrets and then they usually just kind of have like a stoic look on their face from then on out for the rest of their presidency and then they don't change much. Um, something kind of interesting that happened with the White House is this is actually the second version of the White House because in the Battle of 1812, the British actually burned it down. They burned down our White House. The British. Anyway, that's it. It's a little bit of a shorter video. I apologize. Like I mentioned, there aren't a ton of ghost sightings. Um, there's really not a lot of confirmed stuff that happens in the White House that's really all that exciting. So, But with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for choosing to spend some time with me today. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, I got a Super Bowl hat. My brother, I think I said this last year at this time, he uh, helps with the Super Bowl halftime show. And he always gets me a hat. So... I have hats for the last four or five years um, for the Super Bowl. So this one's purple because purple is my favorite color. I don't know if you guys could tell. Purple is my favorite color. But thank you for choosing to spend some time with me today. And I'll catch you in the next one.